In this tutorial, we will see how to find the master production schedule and compute available to promise. The master production schedule, or MPS, is another approach to aggregate planning. It is used for independent demand items when we have a production lot size and we wish to schedule based on that and the forecast. MPS ignores cost and just schedules based solely on the forecast and lot size. Just because we make 100 units in a given time period does not mean that all 100 are available to be sold to customers. That is, not all of them may be available to promise. The reason is that we may have promised some of them to other customers already. Already promised production is called committed production. Available to promise is that portion of the production that has not already been committed to another customer. The screen shows the form that is used for calculating the master production schedule. Some notes are in order. The periods are almost always weeks. Generally speaking, the forecast is not granular enough to provide a value for each week. We handle this by assuming the forecast is spread out equally over each week. Thus, if we had a monthly forecast, we would divide it by 4 to get the weekly values for the MPS. Committed orders, along with any beginning inventory, would be given as part of the problem. Committed orders are also known as firm planned orders. Projected on hand inventory is the inventory at the end of the period. We schedule production as needed to keep this value from going below zero. This is where we schedule the production. This schedule would then flow into the material requirements planning process. As mentioned earlier, available to promise is the inventory that has not been committed to any customer. Note that we calculate available to promise after we have finished calculating the master production schedule. In this first example, a firm has a forecast of 480 in the first month and 520 in the second month. They have beginning inventory of 28 and a lot size of 250. They have committed orders of 22 in period 1, 16 in period 2, 8 in period 3, and 4 in period 4. Compute the master production schedule. 480 divided by 4 equals 120, so we schedule 120 in the first four periods. 520 divided by 4 equals 130, so we schedule 130 in periods 5 through 8. Entering the committed orders completes the setup of this problem. We have beginning inventory of 28 and need 120, so we must schedule production of the lot size of 250. One note, if the committed order size for any period exceeds the forecast, you use the committed order size in place of the forecast. The beginning inventory of 28 plus production of 250 minus the forecast of 120 equals 158. For period 2, we have beginning inventory of 158 and only need 120, so no production is needed. 158 minus 120 equals 38. For period 3, we have beginning inventory of 38 and need 120, so we schedule production of 250. 38 plus 250 minus 120 equals 168. For period 4, we have beginning inventory of 168 and only need 120, so no production is needed. 168 minus 120 equals 48. For period 5, we have beginning inventory of 48 and need 130, so we schedule production of 250. 48 plus 250 minus 130 equals 168. For period 6, we have beginning inventory of 168 and only need 130, so no production is needed. 168 minus 130 equals 38. For period 7, we have beginning inventory of 38 and need 130, so we schedule production of 250. 38 plus 250 minus 130 equals 158. For period 8, we have beginning inventory of 158 and only need 130, so no production is needed. 158 minus 130 equals 28. That completes calculating the master production schedule. We are now ready to calculate available to promise. To compute available to promise for period 1, you only look at the periods up to but not including the next scheduled production. We have 28 beginning inventory plus production of 250 for a total of 278. Of these, 22 plus 16 equals 38 are committed. So, 278 minus 38 equals 240 are available to promise. Since we have production scheduled again in period 3, we calculate available to promise again in period 3. To do that, we ignore the period used to calculate the first available to promise. We also ignore all the periods beginning with the next scheduled production. We have production of 250 and 8 plus 4 equals 12 committed orders. That yields 250 minus 12 equals 238 available to promise. 
For the remaining scheduled production, there are no committed orders, so the entire production is available to promise. In this example for you to try, a firm has a forecast of 800 in the first month and 1,000 in the second month. They have beginning inventory of 25 and a lot size of 400. They have committed orders of 225 in period 1, 160 in period 2, 100 in period 3, 45 in period 4, 17 in period 5, and 2 in period 6. Compute the master production schedule. Since you've seen an example already, let me suggest that you pause the video and try to work this problem on your own. Once you're done, you can use the video to check your work and spot any mistakes you might have made. Eight hundred in the first month equals two hundred per week, and one thousand in the second month equals two hundred fifty per week. The committed orders are shown on the screen. For week one, our beginning inventory of twenty-five is not high enough, so we schedule production of a lot size of four hundred. To calculate ending inventory, we use the committed orders of two hundred twenty-five since they exceed the forecast of two hundred. Twenty-five plus four hundred minus two hundred twenty-five equals two hundred. Did you catch that slight difference in the calculations? For period two, we have enough inventory, so no production is required. Two hundred minus two hundred equals zero. For period three, we have no inventory, so we schedule production of four hundred. 400 minus 200 equals 200. For period 4, we have enough inventory, so no production is required. 200 minus 200 equals 0. For period 5, we have no inventory, so we schedule production of 400. 400 minus 250 equals 150. For period 6, inventory is inadequate, so we schedule production of 400. 150 plus 400 minus 250 equals 300. For period 7, we have adequate inventory, so no production is required. 300 minus 250 equals 50. For period 8, inventory is inadequate, so we schedule production of 400. 50 plus 400 minus 250 equals 200. How are you doing so far? We have beginning inventory of 25 plus 400 production for a total of 425. We have committed orders of 225 plus 160 equals 385. That gives us available to promise of 425 minus 385 equals 40. For period 3, production of 400 minus committed orders of 100 plus 45 equals 145 equals available to promise of 225. For period 5, 400 minus 17 equals 383 available to promise. For period 6, 400 minus 2 equals 398. For period 8, all 400 being produced are available to promise. How did you do? Do you understand it now? If you found that this video helped you with your operations management problem, please consider liking the video and even subscribing to the channel.